I'm Dre Pinkney, uh, another producer, writer uh, in Triangle Park. Perfect. Multi instrumentalist. Yeah, mo yeah, multi instruments. Yeah, what have you, you know. Yeah. <laughs> whatever. Right, whatever we'll, get into, we'll get into all that in the conversation. And last but not least, sir. Hey. Hello, everybody. Ali, Ali Andro, bro. Nice to meet you. Uh, <coughs> Owner of Triangle Park, a producer. Okay. Those right. Yeah. All right. So today's conversation with has been brought to you where we're talking about the dream team, right? And what we really want to dive deep into is what does it look like to be a part of a team where you can collaborate with each other and make music that influences is influences culture and grows and grows fan bases for different artists. And so I want to start at the beginning. And Scott, I want to hear from you first. Um, how did Triangle Park come about? How did it start? And how did it start? Um, well, it started in, in uh, Philadelphia. Uh, Ali and I were um, working on a uh, group called Good Girl that we helped develop uh, in Philadelphia for a good three three years we were working on. He did a, a lot of uh, the production work as well as uh, a live live um, on, on for shows. I was doing development work and production with him. Um, and it, he was a part of my um, another team that we were working with. And, since we worked so well together, uh, we decided to uh, team up and create uh, Triangle Park. Um, and the Triangle Park idea came from, um, came from this is a truth of, of me living, coming from Richmond, Virginia to, to Philadelphia. I grew up in front of a Triangle Park. So like might as well just name it Triangle Park. That's where my inspiration was from. So, um, and I asked Ali, Ali was like, I'm down. I was like, let's go. So, you know, we. That's how that's how it, it began in Philadelphia, and then um, Ali actually uh, knew uh, more more producers and, and instrumentalists because he's half in the uh, the live world and in the production world. He wanted to move into that. So I know you have other questions that <laughs> that uh, can yeah. I don't want to go into that. So no, I feel like yeah. yeah I feel like we're gonna end up getting into all of it through through the questions, yeah. but I want to know from. Um, sort of, Dre and Eddie, how you all got involved with Triangle Park. I know, Scott, you were sharing a little bit about it, but in your words, how you all sort of reintroduced to it. Well, uh, I was introduced to Triangle Park through um, through Ali, actually, when uh, we decided to move to LA. Uh, he came out shortly before me, and then uh, I kind of made the tr transition. And uh, he says, hey, well, you know, me, me and Scott have this, uh, you know, production thing going on. It's like you might as well hop on. So, you know, I kind of rolled, you know, with the with the with the team. You know what I mean? So kind of got on that way. Oh. Maybe how about you? Um I've known them uh since they were working on Good Girl. Um, mm -hmm. and I had always been a separate entity. So like anything they really needed from me, because I because I had built a relationship with them already as far as uh just friendship um, and I grew to love them. So I'm just like, you know, whatever you need, I, I don't mind. Like, I, I, and it it was good for, for me to be with them too because I, I was learning a lot from them. So I'd always been a separate entity. And, um, you know, years later, I uh, ended up signing with them um, and just joining the family and uh, they embraced me. So. Okay, cool. Uh, Ali, why was it important to, and I know Scott, you, you as well, why was it important to bring together a, uh, a music production team that sort of worked on, move from project to project together? I know traditionally we see people collaborate on different projects together, but never sort of in this team format. Um, so I'm, I'm curious to hear from you, Ali, and then Scott too, why was it important to bring a team like this together? Mm. I think uh, I think we just knew early that uh, you know it's, it's it's a better situation when you have more people, and um, we knew that we were going to have more work coming in, and with that, you know, we wanted to have more people to collab with. You know what I'm saying? People that were stable, and you know, we Scott has always been like you know two minds is better than one kind of person. I have also been too, but the longer you know, it's just two of y'all year three, year four, year five, year seven. Uh -huh. Might want to add some people, bro. So, there you go. <laughs> it's, a lot, it's, 
Seriously, you know, you got to lighten your own load and, and, you know, help others out. And things just make sense as organic. It's really just about organicness. Like, yeah. it's got and which is great. I'm playing too. Well, I like organicness and he does too. So, you know, I think that we just kind of preach certain things. So as you preach it, it's going to kind of happen to you as well. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, natural. Yeah, Scott, do you have anything to add to that? I'm um, here. Oh. We don't know what you said. Say, say it again. One more time. In time. What happens? We never understand what he said. <laughs> it's it. It's it's it. it. Right. Is that it's out of time? Yeah, right. come back, come back the wireless router. <laughs> yeah, there right. we go. The wireless router. I'm, I'm, I'm going to come back in. Okay. Uh, We're going to let you get it together and then we'll come back. Hey, there we'll we go. Back. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. You got it. All right. All right, you're back. So adding, what do you uh, have to add sort of to what uh, Ali was saying in terms of why bring a team together in terms of collab and collaborating consistently? Uh, because iron sharpens iron and mm -hmm. always. So, you know, multiple mindsets, um, multiple um, ideas, perspectives, they, it helps build and helps sharpen every instrument that you have. So having a different perspective on something, having a different uh, approach on something is go always going to collectively, you know, win more than a singular, you know, multiple times, you know, you guys really have basketball teams, you know, that's why you have football teams. You just don't have a singular person on the, on the field with, you know, and it, and it helps, it helps in moving the ball forward. It helps in moving um, what you want to have happen forward and it, and it helps in, in helping people at the same time. So, at the same time as you're winning, you're actually developing at the same time. So I'm constantly developing. Nettie's, Nettie's constantly developing. Ali, we're all growing and developing. And Andre, the same. We're all doing that at the same time. As as well as we're moving forward, we're developing new skills. Right. And so I I can learn from from Ali. Ali would be like this chord right here, or Ali would be like, yeah, you should think about this. You know, this, how about this artist right here? We should work with. Yeah. You know. You know, it's just different minds and they always work better with different minds together. And if you can work collectively together, yeah, you know, and yeah. separately at the same time, it's like, it's, it's collective. Right, I feel like, and that's a huge part of, of putting together a team, uh, a team like this specifically is that collectively you all work very well together, but what also sort of amplifies the work that you all are to do is that you all have very specific talents that you bring to the table. And I wanna unpack those a little bit and share those with our participants. And Andre, starting with you, when when talking about your involvement with Triangle Park, like what do you feel you specifically bring bring to the table that allows you all to collaborate in the way you do? Oh man, uh, well, uh, first off, I guess it's mo mostly the mu from a musical standpoint, uh, just uh, playing the most of the stringed instruments, you know, the uh, guitars and the uh, and the bass. Uh, since I'm primarily a bass player, but then also, you know, keys and uh, you know drums if need be. But yeah, pretty much just kind of son sonically laying the, the foundation, like laying the bed, uh, just bringing that aspect to the table. Like amongst you know editing and some songwriting here and there too, but mostly just laying that musical foundation samples and things of that nature um like you know other than that uh it's pretty much just uh years of paying attention to music uh from a you know from a different level uh since i had a background in touring so i just pretty much applied that to that bid and then allow everybody else you pretty much throw the oop for everybody else to kind of dunk that you know what i mean Cool. Now the same question for you too. What do you feel like when when discussing this music production team that you specifically bring to the table for collaboration? Um, me personally, uh, because I, I can play a little bit on the keys, but you know I dare not disrespect my teammates who are full blown professionally accomplished musicians, whom I respect. Um, the instrument that I, I usually play is is this right here, my voice. Mm -hmm. And um, the one thing I love about um, all of us coming together is because we all understand melodies, we all understand how they work because we all play a particular instrument. Um, it, you know, uh, that's how you bring a song together. Mm -hmm. You know, um, it's not just about the music that you hear. It's also, it, you know, vocals and, and music they marry. You know what I mean? That's, that's a song in itself. Yeah. And they all work together. You know what I mean? And because all of us actually can sing a little bit too, I'm sorry to put y'all out there, but they can. 
Sorry. Okay. I, don't, I don't know completely <laughs> about that all the way. Don't yet. listen to Scott. He is a vocal producer too. That means you have to know how to do a little bit of this. Yes. Okay. <laughs> gotcha. I'm just gonna. Okay. Gotcha. Well, Scott. Right. Scott. So what? What sort of um, say along the same questions? What are you bringing when it, we're sitting down at the table together, making decisions about sort of what we're producing? What are you bringing to that table? Well, I've I've been in. I think a lot of wisdom is is what I'm I'm bringing most of. Um, I think I think understanding that I've been in I've been in music for and music business for like twenty some odd years. I'm not going to say completely how many more that was. Uh, just seeing the ups and downs of what what happened um, and being able to guide people into like, oh, this probably is a better idea this way. Yeah. Because you know, it's less strict. You know, less restrictions or you know, this can we can win this way making plays. Um, and other than that, you know, like, like Nettie says, everybody is, is such a high level. So I do play keys. Um, you know, I do play violin as well. Um, oh, wow. I, I've, you know, so I started off on those, um, those instruments. Um, but now that I, I can see a lot of different areas, you know, everybody in the team fills up a certain amount of areas. So, so I just move in where we're supposed to be moved in. And I do a lot of vocal production and, and engineering work now uh, in my later years of my, my career. So I was like, okay, I can make it sonically sound sound good. Cause that was one of the hardships I had before as a producer coming up in the game was like, oh, you, you sound, you have great ideas, but you, it doesn't, it's not mixed well. So I, I kind of developed that skill. What, so Ali, what is the process? You, you all talked about this earlier in terms of being able to select projects to work on and, and you all have a, a, a large repertoire of artists that you've worked with, but what is that process when, and Nettie and I were talking earlier about sort of, you all have got projects in the work and, and, and you're doing some of that. So what is that process when someone says, I wanna work with Triangle Park? How do you decide that they're, they're worthy of, of your grace? <laughs> yeah, so. I'm joking. I'm joking. No, nah, bro. I mean, I mean, it's so hard to answer that because you know, the music industry is not the same. You know, because of 2020 and Corona and the BLM and blah 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 blah. blah right. So it's just a lot different. So I, I, the things that I would have probably gauged off before, da, 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 I can't. You know, I don't personally think but I do I do think that we're just looking for um just optimal talent and and just optimal brain at the same time to match like business brain you know you know like just go with it no matter if you are with an artist with a budget or, or you you don't have a budget like it's just certain things that we need you to have fundamentally yeah that's kind of I am with any artist, honestly, bro you know? can you be more specific on on what those fundamentals so, are and anyone can chime in here as well Meaning, meaning, like you know, at least ten thousand hours in the gym, okay. the music. Okay. And, you know, you know, for me, I would like that for a vocalist. I would like them to have ten thousand hours in, meaning in like you know, uh, really practiced. Okay. That's uh, just those that mastery. You know, what I'm saying I would prefer that. Yes, I don't get that often. Let's be clear. <laughs> but yeah, if I would, if that's what I would like. But also, we, you know, we help develop people that aren't quite there. So you know, like. Right. At, have that many expectations is what I guess is what I'm trying to say. I just manage them, right. but you do have um, the core fundamentals, which is just like more so like just good person natured, and you know you're gonna do what you say you're gonna do, and we can trust. And, you know those things to me are high, a hold above uh, music, because music is cool and stuff. But like we're gonna be around each other intimately, you know. Right, right. Honey, gonna make you a millionaire. You're gonna make me a millionaire. It's things that has nothing to do with music that are in place, you know what I mean? And you know, I care about those things, me personally. Right. So that's where I'm on. Scott, I... everything you just said right there. I, I could just literally, I, I get literally all of that, which is um, just a core value, a uh, positive attitude. Like, you know that if you want to put your music and your work into something that is going to be uh, positively, you know, positively done into the community. You know, people see it positively, people um, can take it on and it's moving forward that way. You wanna see your creativity be placed in a place where that, that is, is taken care of and cultivated. So I'm gonna give you a record. I need you to be understanding of where that record is gonna go. 
and understanding of how you want to move that record mm -hmm. because I, I need to have the same ideals or it's gonna it's not gonna go as far as it could be you know yeah you have the same vibe right same way go right so there's a there's i was when i was researching for this uh session scott i re i realized something about your bio is that you've worked with a lot of all of you have worked with a lot of different artists so scott specifically I, my question is how do you manage those different visions when working with different artists sometimes at the same time it's not that it's not that, that hard it's um to do when, when the thing about it is is how do you keep how do you manage yourself so mm -hmm. from the beginning of you know I, I do meditation i do hikes uh, make sure i manage myself so i can manage other energies at the same time mm -hmm. so i have to take care of me first and then when i move into the room i can be more aware of others and help others so i can be aware of wh what they need and help because i've already i've already helped myself in the morning or you know talk to the universe talk to god you know that kind of thing um which helps helps me move through the day without my energy being completely depleted and helping somebody else. Yeah, you know. So that's how it's usually you know, and everybody has different um different personalities in different ways. But you can see the core of somebody when you when you're around them enough. And, yeah. You know, yeah. And I feel like it's important to I think when talking about collaboration, specifically in the music industry, it's really where you see it go awry a lot of times is when the the two people or however many people are in the room don't really know who they are as a person. So they're really not able to contribute to whatever the conversation or the collaboration in the way that you would want them to. And so Dre, when, when thinking about collaboration and creating that space, what does that space look like for, for you? Is it conversations beforehand? Is it we're meeting at a coffee shop and talking about sort of do's and don'ts uh, before we even enter the studio? What, what does that space look like for you? Well, I mean, uh, more often than not, uh, it usually starts with a conversation um you know kind of just on, on some simple stuff you know where we'll just be in the same place same mental frame same mind frame like oh yo i was thinking about doing a song like oh word yo yo we should get up we should do this yeah. all right cool you know i had this idea let's let's knock it out cool like it could start like that um it could also start from from a, a plan thing where you know there, it was premeditated we had a session set up ahead of time and it's like okay well you know this this came this came down from management we're supposed to be in with them and then it's like okay well it was premeditated so we have to we have to be there anyway mm -hmm. so it's just like you know from from a number of things sometimes people will call you from uh you know just just from from getting your note your contact from another function uh requiring you to uh just do it tailors tailor make a specific thing for a specific artist you know just from what they were looking for so mm -hmm. yes yeah, it's, it's not always organic but I do prefer when it is organic. Okay. Yeah. Then how about you? Know, what is the space that you create when you're when you're about to go into a collaboration session? Um. Uh, well, I will say that uh, the one thing that we all uh, said was it was it starts with the conversation. It starts with getting to know the person that you're that you're working with um, and where their head is at. You know, um, everybody has different methods. Like Scott, he likes to go on hikes and talk to people. Uh, Ali likes to buy it for people. Dre likes a conversation. I'm, I'm down for a conversation. But getting to know the person that you're working with is the sets the foundation. You know right. what I mean? Um, understanding who they are, them understanding you, so that you can, at the end of the day, make something wonderful together. You know what I mean? Um, mm -hmm. If there's a disconnect, it won't work. You know, yeah. um, and you can force it, but you can definitely tell the difference between when it was organic and when it wasn't. Yeah. You know? What? Well, uh, Ali, my question uh, for you is sort of around the space of collaboration as well. Is not only what makes sort of Triangle Park work, because I think you all have been able to touch a little bit on it, uh, but what advice do you have? for uh, our audience members who are creating their teams, right? Because a lot of our audience is made up of new artists who are trying to discover what teams to work with. We've got young producers who are also trying to put together teams. Like what is your advice when trying to put a team like this together? Uh, who's uh, that going to? Uh, it was going to Ali, but anyone can answer. Yeah. Um, I would say you have to have strong leadership okay. and strong management that are willing to tell you the truth. Mm. And hopefully you don't fire them. If you don't, you probably go a long way. Okay. Because you're listening to the truth. Because you got talent already. We know that. 
that's great. But if you don't got the truth, you're not gonna last. You know what I'm saying? And I care about y'all. So I don't get that strong leadership, whoever is gonna be the leader of your multiple two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight y'all. And whoever's managing y'all and whoever's your lawyer. Mm -hmm. I would like that to happen for you because I think you'll probably be in this industry longer. Okay. Cool. So that's the heart, honestly. Okay. I appreciate that. Did you have something to add to that, Nettie? No, it pretty much nailed that on the head. <laughs> I love it. Um, so what are, so I want you, I want to tell you this because you guys have been together for a while and have gotten a lot of success around what you've been able to produce, the artists you've been able to work with and the individual projects you all have worked on as well. I want to talk about sort of becoming Triangle Park and then getting this Grammy nomination. And I want to talk about what sort of what shifts did, if any, happen once you found out you are being nominated for a Grammy. And Scott, I'm curious to hear your take on this. Uh, and then let's see who else Scott can chime in. Okay, um, let's see. So when, first of all, when we got the, when we got the nomination, I was woken up um, by, by Ali, Ali. <laughs> and, uh, one of our friends, uh, um, uh, hit us up and we were like we were nominated on on a couple of different projects so and it's exciting to hear you know what i'm saying and we know that um we know it takes it, it, it we're always working so it's it's exciting to hear and, and you feel good about it but you know that you're constantly working you know mm -hmm. it's like it's it's a it's another day but it's like okay we yeah we got we got one on and let's see if we can get something we let's see if we can get win one let's see if we can get yeah. on the billboard it's it's more it's more fe it's future things that we want to get on. So it's, yeah. it's, it's good that to know that people um, people like what we're doing. Right. And then more looks will come from that, which means more people are looking at us and more people are picking us to be in the rooms because usually uh, we're proactive about it. We're a proactive company. So everybody mm -hmm. in Triangle Park gets into rooms by themselves. Mm -hmm. Ali, make, Ali makes um, plays. Uh, Nettie makes plays, I make plays, Dre makes plays. We all get into separate rooms. And then at that point, we can then cross over. Yeah. Like Ali can pull me into the room and say, hey, can you know, can you do this for this room? Like use your, use this power, Scott. Use the uh, power of engineering to help this record out. Yeah. You know, you know what I'm saying? So if Dre pulls me in the same way, if Dre, you know, if Nettie's in something, can you use this power for this reason? It's basically yeah. Avengers type thing. Like, okay. you know, it's a good way to put it. Definitely. It, yeah. It's just like, yeah, everybody can use their one thing that they do completely great inside the room and it connects yeah. together. So, so lot, the more rooms, you know, the more accolades, the more rooms, it's just billboards by which for us to get into more rooms. Yeah. You know? Is uh, Dre with when finding out that uh, you are nominated for a Grammy? Do, was there something that you said to yourself when looking at the projects that were nominated? Wow, this really works. We should look to adapt it to other other projects, or was it like that was specific for that project? We're moving on. Oh, uh, oh man, that's a that's a good question. Um, I mean, yeah, there there was certain things that that uh, I looked at and said, yeah, you know, we should apply this to to you know this whole thought process to everything else that we do. But uh, yeah, I, I just kind of, I'm, I'm one of those like, you know, a nomination is a nomination. I want it all. Like I want, you know, what I'm saying I, I want the Grammys. I want, right. I want all that. So it's like at the end of the day, I, I just, I just keep it going. I keep my feet to the pavement. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Were there, Nelly, Were there any shifts in shifts for you as not only just as a part of this team, but as an individual, like? Wow, I, whether it be like I'm it, like I'm hot stuff, <laughs> or it's like this is just another day for me. Well, I will say that um, my teammates uh, are the ones who definitely keep me inspired to remind me uh, of, you know, a talent or anything that I am. And not not uh, not gonna lie, when I saw the Grammy nominations, I was like, I have a dope team, like to the point where, you know, you you know, you get nominated for one, that's cool, but five, yeah. For different things on different projects. Yeah. Wow. That's, I have a dope team. So, and that's, I just look at it like that. Like, I, yeah, I made the right decision. Like that kind of thing, you know what I mean? So it just makes me happy and proud. Yeah. I, uh, I want to transition because a big part of putting together teams is is not only trusting each other and, and, and having um, the same goals, but also being able to collaborate, right? But there's also 
challenges when it comes to being a team, right? There's different personalities. Uh, and it seems like you all, <laughs> you all have a very complimentary personalities, but also very different personalities as well. Uh, so I'm tr- how do you overcome, and Ali, we'll start with you because it looks like a lot's going on over there. First of all, um, how do you know all this? How, what, go, how do you know all this information? What's going on? He got a bug somewhere. <laughs> Doing our research. Uh, but what, <laughs> what, uh, when challenge, what type of, and that's not specific to this group, because I'm not trying to go <laughs> start Bad Girls Club or something on this call. But um, what, what, when challenges arise within this team when collaborating, how do you sort of move past them? <laughs> Ali? Oh, I'm, I'm, you know what? Somebody walked through here and was talking. Dumb loud. I didn't oh. hear anything. Okay. Well, I, um, I was like, yeah, <laughs> this is nice. You were, you were uh, engaging to the point where I said, oh, he got this. He wants, he just got this question. When, when challenges arise, when collaborating, uh, what, how do you move past them? Mm. You said, I'm, how do you get past what part? I'm sorry. Challenges mm-hmm. that arise when collaborating. Yeah. yeah. Especially with us, two triangle part. I don't know how. I don't, we're collaborating right now, and somebody's interrupting. So look, I don't know how. Look, see that guy? Okay. We're collaborating. Uh, He's interrupting. Uh, well, we're gonna we're gonna move on to Dre. It's a lot going on over there. But you Dre, see yes, I saw. I see it. Dre, when collaborating with uh, Triangle Park, <laughs> Daddy, I know you're dying. Right there. We're collaborating with Triangle Park. How do you all do the last challenge? Who's on there? What in the interruptions? No. <laughs> nah, I mean, as as far as the challenges with any like between each other, like be and I, I'll just say I'll just say this from this this particular space. Is everybody still there? Everyone's still here. Okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, so I, so I'll, I'll just comment from this particular space. Like everybody doesn't know, we had a workhouse. Like okay. it was a workhouse where everybody was staying in the same space like so we it was it was definitely a journey but we each had to get through our things like like personally ourselves and able to like in in order to deal with other people like within triangle park like and these are real personal issues it's like i don't don't mean to interrupt you but the, the rascals are trying to sabotage us they're another production team we're trying to collab with them in peace but they are not but you see this guy oh my god Sorry, I was joking. Yeah, He's actually amazing. I really want to plug them because we are collabing. And this is how you collab. You, you, you put on the people that you're collabing with. So the Rascals, yeah. we are, we're in with them today. And yep. we took a session and they, they, they miss us so much. They came to they get us. us. That, that's yeah, why. Yeah. That's what happened. You know what I'm saying? Right. We'll be back soon, guys. All right. All right. <laughs> They're basically lonely without us. That's what's going on. You know? So, you know. They love us too. Yeah. They love us too much. Yeah. We had to go to So what we just learned was that Collaborating is important, and that uh, you also want to put on other people that you're collaborating with. You want to share their wealth when it comes to marketing, because that's how you grow both of your audiences. Uh, yep. Dre, you were talking about collab. You were talking about how you overcome challenges when collaborating. Well, yeah. So, yeah. Basically, basically, long story short, we were put in a pressure cooker, all of us okay. at the same time. So we had to deal with each other's personal issues, and dealing with each other's personal issues from bathroom etiquette to taking out the trash it helped us in a, in a, in a business setting, because it's like, Oh, if we have to deal with these huge issues here, then going to work and collaborating with these people is nothing right. like compared yeah. to what we deal with in life. And we're, and uh, we're all friends. So right. you know, that makes it a lot easier. Um, we just had to, you know, take that time and be able to be open to, to each of like e- each other's walks and thought processes. And then we could appreciate, everything that we had to bring to the table from all of our gifts and talents to you know just just musical opinions just everything so that's pretty much what we had to overcome Letty, whose idea was it to put everyone real world style into one house and what was the reason behind doing that okay so from what i from what i understand because i i i came after the, the lots okay. of people but um I'll say this, um, just like how the Dungeon family, uh, when they were first working, it was 
artists and producers and everybody was in one house. Just like how um, when Tim and Missy were working with all their artists, everybody was in one house. Mm. It's just, it keeps up the creative, uh, it keeps up the creative flow. You know what I mean? Mm. It keeps up the creativity. It's just the, it's just in the air and it's thick and it keeps you working. And like, and literally everybody from all of those situations were all successful after that. You know what I mean? Um, it's just, it's a thing, you know what I mean? You stay in the creative vibe, you stay creative and you stay around people who keep you creative, which is the reason why that type of idea usually uh, usually works. Now, when you deal with different personalities, that's a thing. But one thing about all of us is we all have siblings. Uh -huh. So we're all used to dealing with uh, other people um, and still loving them past yeah. difficulties, disagreements or whatever. Um, I will say the funny thing is, as you can see, I'm the only girl, so I got a bunch of brothers now. Yeah. I mean, I have two brothers already, but I have a bunch of brothers now and having them, um, I've definitely learned a lot from being around them, but yeah. just like how I love my brothers past things, they are the same way. And they, and they in return, do the same thing. So. Yeah. Cool. Uh, I want to take some questions from our audience, but, but first, Ali, can you find out where Scott is and invite him back to the conversation? I'm, I'm here. I'm, can you oh. hear me? Yeah, I can He's hear you. My, 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 my video has been uh, has been uh, has been taken off, but you can take it. You can take me on. You can you can put me back on video. I can't. Okay. I can't put myself using that. Okay. Locked out. All right. I understand because the rascals wanted to, you know. It was gonna, yeah, show. it got a little heated over there. He oh. got a little crazy. Yeah, I get it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, they, those are those are crazy guys. You know, they work with Ariana Grande and stuff like that. They, oh. You know, they just, they're, you know, Drake and stuff, they're just privileged. You know, so they want to take over everything. That's so what, what it is. What, so what is, I mean, I know it's all jokes though, but like, what is that? What, how do you, when other teams present themselves to you, how, do, how does collaboration look with another sort of production team? Are you sharing? Is it a competition? Is it all love? What does our relationship look like? It's love, but it's still a competition. Okay. It's, it's both. Anymore. It's both. Every, it's iron sharp as iron. So you, you see like, you know, you know, you want to get the record on as much as possible. And, you know, I know they want to get the record on. So it's like, okay, so then you kind of, okay, well, I got this. I've got that. You can, you can, you can uh, give me some drum patterns here, or I got a sample here. Or you figure it out. Um, but you definitely want to put your best foot forward. So it's not, it's never... You know, I'm never lax when I come into the room. It might look like I'm lax, but I'm like, I don't want to get the record, so yeah. I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna give him the best that I can give him, you know, or you know, the, we're gonna do the best that we can when we get yeah. into the room. Um, and then after that, you know, after I was like, I've done the best I can do in this yeah. and helped everybody out as much as I possibly can, then I'm good. I'm like, okay, I know I've tried my best, you know, and I try to do it in a way where it's not offensive to anybody or pushing anybody around. Yeah. You know, that's the biggest thing is how to do, it's one of the biggest things ever in, in any type of, in this industry, which is you're working with a lot of um, a creative. So we're all sensitive in, in that way. So how do we get to a good result without stepping on anybody's toes or taking over anybody's live? You know, I'm, you know, we're, we're on Zoom and he just wanted to come into the Zoom. Like, I, you know, I, 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 got <laughs> locked, I got locked out. Yeah, he <laughs> clearly didn't come far enough. I came to the other side of the studio. Yes, yes, yes. But it's, you know, it works, it works. We figure, we figure it out, you know, and most of the time the collaborations are, um, come out very, very well. I mean, cause everybody's putting it in their best foot forward. So it, it's like, it's like having the, the best superheroes together and trying to do the, do their thing the best. Yeah, I love, I love the superhero Avengers analogy that you're using. Cause it is, you're building together a team and you all are stronger together, but you all also are very strong individually and, and have specific powers that you're bringing to the group. So I, I, I enjoy that. Before we get into questions with our audience, uh, Scott, can we see your shirt? Ah, that's perfect. Our audience will love that. <laughs> I'm a huge office fan. Uh, Mark, okay, so Marcus from our audience asked, uh, how should a new musician go about getting artists or clients to write and produce for? Uh, Ali, do you want to take this question and anyone else who wants to chime in after? You said, how do you find artists to write and produce for? That was the yeah, question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As a new musician, how does he find artists and clients to write and produce for? It's such an interesting time. Honestly, before, you know, we could just go out. <laughs> yeah. Apparently, you know, close to, you know, can't. I, I, I think Nettie actually was telling me about some, this, 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 this website she's been using, honestly. 
that, uh, especially if it's about, you know, making an income, because mm -hmm. I'm a musician, you make some money. So yeah. she could tell you something new about that. Because normally, you know, like I said, I would, I'm, I'm more of an in-person, old school kind of way with my, yeah. my ways. It's just, that's not allowed, you know? As maybe these, these new apps and these new ways that, you know, I would recommend. So Nettie may be able to tell you more. Yeah, the site that um, he's talking about is called uh, soundbetter.com. Okay. And basically what it is, is um, you can make an account on there. Okay. Um, you can have people write uh, reviews. You can put your credentials up, some things that you've done or work that you've done. Okay. Um, and people who need from you will hit you up and send you a message and say, hey, I'd like to collaborate with you. You mm -hmm. can set your own price. Um, um you know they they help you out they recommend things for you but for the most part um it's a good way to get work uh it helps people look particularly because like he said in this in these times you know we don't go out so things are limited to us but we yeah. do have the internet and so because of that, that that helps you stay in the the rotation of working so um i i was trying to answer it by putting it in there it's called soundbetter.com okay cool thank you um, our next question is from Giselle, who it's sort of similar, but you all have been able to um, make connections, whether it was pre-COVID or post-COVID or in Philly or in LA. And so how do you go about sort of presenting what your work to people that you want to work with? Is it sort of, uh, are you changing it via email? Or are you sending them to a website? How are you saying, this is what I've done and I'd love to work with you? Uh, Dre and friend. Oh, it's Scott. <laughs> I thought I thought you was one of the rascals. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, my phone. Can you, can, uh, can you can you repeat the? Yeah. Line? How do you go about presenting? How do you go about presenting your work when you're trying to collaborate? I, and, and do you send it over? Are you having conversations? Like, how do you go about pitching yourself to other opportunities? Oh yeah, well, uh, you know, there's a few ways. Uh, you can start it with a conversation. Say, you know, I, I had an idea. I was working on something, or she, you know, I had a dream about this. Yo, I got I got to get this out. You're the perfect person. You can do it. It can go from that uh, to, you know, literally playing them a record. Like, say, if they're riding in the car with you, you know, or something like that, and then you're like, oh, by the way, I got this. Yo, I got this record. I was I started working on. I had this idea I wanted to get out. And then it's like, okay, I'll just push play on it. You know, you can do that. The aux chord thing works, you know, if you're at a studio, whatever the case may be. But there's a there's a, there's a few different ways you can go about it. There is this, I've been thinking about this because I also know like you all have been able to do something that's been very, it's not always easy. You all been able to build this brand as Triangle Park, but also each of you have individual brands. And so, Nani, my question is, how important was it or is it for you to not only be a part of the Triangle Park brand, but also have this uh, separate brand or, or is it separate as Nettie Wood? Um, uh, a Girl Made This is definitely my, my brand. Mm -hmm. um, it kind of just, it came to me uh, uh, and it's been with me even before I, um, I was with the guys because of the fact that, um, you know, at, I come from a time where, um, you know, girls like little to, to none, you know what I mean? The most uh, prominent female producer was Missy, you know what I mean? That everybody knew for sure. Um, and everybody else was kind of behind the scenes. You know what I mean? Um, and now that we're in a time where, you know, female producers are emerging, um, we still make up a small percent percentage of the industry, but nevertheless, there is an emerge and it's nice to empower um, young ladies to, you know, step out and, and show that, you know, you do this, you know what I mean? And it's not, you know, a girl made this music, it's a girl made this period, like a girl yeah. made uh, this this painting, a girl made this song, a girl made this uh, track, a girl made this whatever, you know what right. I mean? Um, and it's, it's uh, it definitely puts a light on um, people who would then probably go unnoticed, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yep. Um, that's why a girl made this is important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, I, I wanna ask that same question to everyone else, but before, before I do, 
you, now you started out when you were 15, right? And so we have some high schoolers that are in our, in our audience. And so what is sort of one thing you wish that you knew at that age that you know now uh, that you could have applied? That question also, I asked it before, let me try again. What's one thing you knew that now that you knew, wish you knew that when you were 15? Um, the importance of staying uh, and being consistent, like literally paying attention to the details of the details of everything. Mm -hmm. um, being, um, you know, uh, um, one of the four agreements is to be impeccable with your word, like knowing those things, knowing how important it is to educate yourself on something you love to do. Like, it's not enough just to do what you love, but to do research on it, to really get lost in what you love to do because that all goes into perfecting your craft. Mm -hmm. um, and the better, the more you're consistent with what you're doing, the better you get. And the more you're 10, uh, you get your 10,000 hours in, that's when you know that you've uh, come to a place where you're reaching new levels. Mm -hmm. Just staying consistent and, um, and perfecting your craft and researching above all else, researching. Yeah. Where, uh, Scott, for you, where do you go or, or sort of how do you keep yourself fresh on the, the latest trends in the music industry or even just continue to build your skill set? Um, usually, since we're a team, um, I kind of, I have certain people that, that, I, that I go to just to, to ask questions of like who's, what's going on. Uh, Ali's very, very proactive with, uh, with uh, listening to like the new, new music um, mm -hmm. Friday. And he'll put us onto different things. He'll put it into our group chat, like, hey, you know, check out this artist here. We should might be on this vibe. He'll make whole playlists. Yeah, like, you know, oh, cool. You should be, you know, you should be on this vibe maybe by now. You know, um, Dre does his his homework, so he goes into a whole nother. He, he he loves to go into research mode. He'll start recreating certain um, vibes that are on the, on the radio now, yeah. just so we can get the idea of what is going on. Um, I um, I talked to. Um, you know, a good friend uh, um, and writer, uh, Ant, he's always on, on in, like, this is coming out, you know, Bryce Taylor coming out, uh, Anthony Clemens, um, Nettie's always like, I'm listening to a whole R&B playlist, she'll make her own playlist of that, and I'll listen to that, so um, it's friends and friends and family, you know, usually, uh, usually has been, you know, on the pulse as well, usually out here in LA, I like to say that we're about a, a year ahead of everybody anyway. Okay because of the fact that the industry is so close here. So what we're making right now is going to end up on something maybe six months or nine months, 12 months from now. Um, so we're making, we're at the, we're on the wave now. So what y'all are hearing is stuff that has come, that we made like maybe 2017, 2018, you know? So it, it's because we're on the ground here. Yeah. New York used to be a hub like that too, as well, because you're, but now it's more at Los Angeles. Uh, Ali, are you in the same building as Dre? <laughs> yeah, we're all in the same we're building. We are all in the same building. Why don't you just go in the room with them? I walked into the bathroom because I was in a different place and other people were just in there okay. talking. All right. so. <laughs> okay. You better wash your hands, too. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right, so we have a question from Destiny. He wants to know, are you all signed with the publisher? Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, well, three of us are. Uh, Nettie hasn't signed to a publishing agreement yet. And are you all? Is is it Triangle Park is signed to the publisher, or is it you all each individually are signed? How how do I guess more so? How do credits work when it comes to the work you guys work on? Uh, usually, right now, um, it's Ali and my my personal. Uh, so it's Kyla Music and then uh, um, Paul Boy Production. And then uh, Dre is, was the first signee, so he signed to Triangle Park, the publishing. Okay. And then Net Nettie uh, is, her publishing is with Triangle Park and Star Island, which is our management. Okay. So when she gets a deal, it'll be like, you know, Cobalt, uh, Star Island, Triangle Park, uh, my girl made this. So it's, it, there are different, um, different entities, uh, different LLCs. Okay. Um, which protect for, um, you should know about this these things which protect you from uh th taxes and everything mm -hmm. it helps you become a different entity where you can uh do your tax and get more tax returns and everything shelter you from certain things that might come after you so yeah. it's very it's it's legal stuff yeah all right <laughs> I see, and a part of your a part of your team is uh you have a lawyer on your team right 
Yeah. Yes, which is very, very important. Where yeah. do you do you, do you know of any resources for a young artist uh, uh, to get that sort of legal advice or, or know sort of how to how not to be sued? Question mark. I would say do your research on on uh, get Donald Passman's book. Um, oh, all yeah. you need to know about oh, the music yeah. industry. Yeah. Yeah. Like, let's start there. Donald Passman is all you need to know about the music industry. Uh-huh. Start there, and then I'm sure that they have footnotes and, re- and references inside that book that will teach you to tell you to you know who to go through. Um, definitely ask around your know, local. You know, what I'm saying you, who is the local entertainment lawyer? I remember I was in Richmond, Virginia, and it was like. Who, who, entertainment lawyer in, when I was in Richmond like who who is that like who, and somebody would finally like tell me like oh this guy you know um is the, I think um I've forgotten the um the guy's name now but uh he did the Cosby show like um intro and he, oh, was, he was he was like the only person I knew in in Richmond that you know had done something musical at, at that level so you know asked him for me to somebody so whoever you notice know has been around you in your, in your area yeah um excuse me, Ali, uh, i'm curious to know about um you all have been creating music um for quite a while now and i'm wondering was there a cultural movement that has happened that has changed the way that you create music uh hmm. cultural movement you said yeah or just or just anything in culture that has influenced or changed the way that you make music now Hmm. I don't know. I, that's a really good question. Only because I feel like my, I'm always going to do the same thing no matter what. Mm-hmm. So yes, but no. Okay. You know, like it's it's like you know I got get inspiration for sure. Like definitely some of this. You know, I was in Philadelphia for two months out of the year during the height of just a lot of uh, protests and. Uh, Looting, uh, looting. Yeah. Yeah. Real, you know, physical in your, you know, physical space situations, mm-hmm. you know, is a real place. You know what I'm saying? We come from there and smiles. And, but no, it's not that much smiles all the time. Mm-hmm. My point is, I grab inspiration from that. Um, and it does, I credit my city for my processing, for my musical background and strengths and ability. Cause my ma- most of my mentors and my masters and teachers they're just stay there, or it's spread out. Don't get me wrong, there's a, they're all over the country, Caribbeans and stuff like that. But Philly has been my biggest inspiration because it's just so much to talk about, and yeah. So things and so when I was there during 2020, yes, the, the I think I brought a lot that brought some out of me seeing um, how my people were treated and then seeing how we reacted and what we did to our own like neighborhoods yeah. you know I mean? things and then get back to LA where it's nothing like that where right. I, you know so I've been drawing inspiration from just what it is black and white of my of my life you know what I'm saying what the times are and stuff like that it comes out of my music I think because uh yeah man it's real it's real if I could piggyback off of, off of uh you know just as far as the uh would you the movement per se yeah. uh the F- Philly like as a as a music scene and culturally like it's such a big movement in itself like there's some rich history when it when it comes to music and 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 culture that i think we we've all been like heavily influenced in that like i'll i'll refer back to that like if i if i go a few months or like a, a year or whatever without listening to anything that's been influenced by philly's music culture like I always refer back to it and it oh. always brings me to a place where I can like draw in- inspiration like immediately and then just get right back to it. Because I think our, our people like, you know, like black people in general have a way of taking what's going on like politically or in the world, whatever the case may be, and being able to turn that into like, you know, just draw creativity and turn it into something special, like unlike anybody else. Like just personally, so yeah. Uh, before I move on, Nettie or Scott, do you have anything to add, add to that, or the movements that have happened in the world and in life that have influenced the way, whether it be the way you create music or just the way you operate within the industry? I think, I think me. I think um, 
like how we're we're moving um, and where we're moving our information to, or where we're moving our our, our, our um, sound to, does you know who's going to take it and and go a certain way? Like I was recently in the studio with Simba and Brandy and and uh, Sebastian Cole, and we were working on a whole EP for that you know the upheaval of you know Black Lives Matter and that that kind of uh, you know um, push you know, for information. So you want to do your part as much as possible, you know, and, and all of us want to do our part in moving the culture forward. As, you know, and, that, and we are the pulse of the culture. So, you know, we are, everybody listens to, um, I mean, all creatives are what, you know, people listen to just on the leisure time in, in times of need, in times of inspiration. So we, we definitely take that moniker seriously, you know, um, yeah, and, and and my brothers here, you know, uh, Dre and Ali, um, Nettie and my sister, like they they're they're at a, at a top level elite of, of of musicianship, and that is that comes with a a heavy burden to be able to you know to create for people and and do it right, and, you know, and you know inspire people. So you know, I'm I'm always impressed with them, and I'm always uh, glad to be on a team that that works this way. Yeah. So I want to bring our, I'm going to bring our session to a close. We are, our time has come now. It's been, it's been a ride. Thank you all so, so much for that. Uh, I want to end it on sort of out of this conversation, we talked about collaboration and we, we spoke about sort of how to build this team and, and what successes and challenges look like in doing that. And just Nettie, starting with you, what's one, what's one thing you want our audience to walk away with? Uh, today? Um, just to understand um, the importance uh, of that success doesn't happen by yourself. Mm -hmm. You don't become successful alone. Mm -hmm. um, the importance of having a team, having, and and understanding what it means to, to be a team. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, understanding being protected in that, that in that is protection. Mm -hmm. um, you know, because you could be, you know, thrown to the wolves, but you don't become successful by yourself. Yeah. Not at all. It doesn't matter how good you are. It's always good to, to be able to receive uh, correction. You know what I mean? If you can't be able to receive correction, then you won't grow. And it's always good to, to see other people um, and their different ways that they do things because you're constantly learning. And it's good to learn from people around you who are better than you, mm -hmm. who do things better than you, everything like that. You have to grow and you're not gonna grow if you don't absorb from the people right. that's around you. You do not become successful by yourself. Beautifully mm -hmm. said. Ali, what do you have for us? What's one thing you want our audience to walk away with today? What's the last part you said? What's the one thing you want our audience to walk away with today? Mm. I mean, I hope they're inspired to uh, collab mm -hmm. and stay, collab stay collaborative and then you, know, you might find your team like we do. Scott, Good luck. Ray. Good luck. Oh, you said me? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, if I could leave you with something, I would say uh, if you choose to do something, do it well. Mm -hmm. If you decide to work on a team, do that well. Be a good team mem member, you know, throw your oops for your teammates and things of that nat nature and learn from everyone that's on the team because they have a lot to offer. So that's what I would leave you with. And Scott, last but not least. I would say uh, try to stay inspired. Mm -hmm. Find out what your inspiration is. Mm -hmm. Find out what, what, what moves you and, and keep on making sure you go back to it. Go back to the inspirational lake or whatever you are, you you know, that makes you, I, I love movies. To the, so go to the waters of Minnetonka. Yeah, the the, the Lake know. Minnetonka, yeah, you know, you know, <laughs> you rain. Uh, purify yourself. Purify in yourself, the waters. Yeah, in the water. <laughs> 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 I, like, I like going back to movies. Like I, I love Star Wars. I love, uh, I love, uh, you know. I love hey, we get it, we get it, we get it. We, we, we know. <laughs> So that's what okay. it is, you know. That inspires me to 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 you know work. So and you know, okay. meditation, prayer, always. Yes. 
Well, thank you all so much for being here today. This has been an amazing session. Uh, and I think you all have dropped, I know you all have dr um, dropped some gems for us uh, and even, even some real time collaboration. I just launched a, a poll for our participants to let us know how they heard about today's session. Uh, so please engage in that. Uh, but thank you all so much for being here. Um, we definitely appreciate it. And then for our audience, again, this whole week, of programming for Music Forward is about collaboration. So tomorrow you can tune into our career development workshop at 3 at three p.m. and sign up on our website at hobmusicforward.org to keep learning. But to all of you, um, I hope to see you in the near future. Those of you who are in LA and will come to LA. But until then, thank you and I'll see you later. <laughs>